in race two here on the Gold Coast. The Porsche storm off the line. And what about the run from Bradbury and the TNT Porsche? He is the reigning Porsche Cup champion. Slots himself up into second position. But the man they're all trying to catch is Jim Richards, who's out in the lead. Mark Williamson kicking himself there. He's just absolutely thrown away any advantage from that front row starting position. He got bogged down off the line. He's been swung by a heap of cars. He was very impressive yesterday, Mark Williamson, in uh, what were quite atrocious conditions and drove extremely well to finish second outright. Bradbury third, but Bradbury's moving well now. Mark Noski was slow off the line in the Ferrari 360 with that semi-automatic gearbox, but now he's starting to make a move on Peter Fitzgerald. We're down towards Queensland turn. Sweep through this left-hander, which brings them up toward the Esplanade. Then they'll fire along, parallel to the beach, that long straight. Two Porsche 911 GT3s, in fact, three of them up in front, if you include Peter Fitzgerald there as well. Then it's the Ferrari 360 of Mark Noski. He took the first ever race win in the 2000 Championship. Did it on the streets of, uh, of Adelaide. Star starting to work over the back of Noski's Ferrari now. The 5.7 litre V12 Lamborghini against the 3.6 litre V8 Ferrari. So it'll be an interesting battle between these two. Stokel also a race winner around the streets of Adelaide. So they like these street circuits, those guys. And mounted in Italian cars. I guess some people at home, Craig, would be wondering, I'm sure these are showroom cars, but how showroom are they? What sort of modifications are they allowed to race? Well, they're very much production-based uh, sports cars or exotic GT cars, Mark. They are allowed to change the springs and shocks in the cars. They are allowed to change the engine management system. There are a few modifications made to some of the other marks, like the Dodge Viper in terms of safety, giving it a better brake package to try and compete with the Porsche GT3 and the Ferrari 360. But in terms of the engine, the gearbox, uh, the major configurations of the cars, the body shells, they're all production-based GD sports cars. Well, Jimmy Richards showing the dominance he showed yesterday. Look at this now in dry conditions. The veteran, marvellously talented driver, enormously experienced and very enthusiastic about his racing. And look at the gap he's got here as they come across the star finish line the first time around. Interesting now to watch Mark Noski in the prancing horse Budweiser Ferrari 360 chasing Peter Fitzgerald's Falcon Tires Porsches. He's closed this time, Craig. Under brakes, he has a look down the inside. Oh, he's oh. run wide. He's run wide. Now, he's gained two places out of that, but that will uh, prove costly. Yes. He's a top go penalty there, I would think. Well, he's actually dropped back in the queue. You can see there, <laughs> he saved the, uh, the marshals the trouble. But whether they still show him the black flag, it'll be interesting to see. But he went straight across that, picked up two positions, gave those two positions back. But whether the officials rule on it, we'll have to see. It's going to be very interesting, actually, because the same, same thing happened to Jimmy Richards two years ago, and they still gave him the stop go penalty. But uh, Fitzgerald now makes an inside move on Peter Bradbury in the TNT car. Well, talk about curb hopping. See how close he had all four wheels on the inside of the curb that time around. Fitzy taking a very short line through turn three. Bradbury moving across to uh, cover his line. Make sure Fitzgerald stays on the outside line. Noski now closing on these two as well. But Jimmy Richards, look at him. He's got a break now, probably 12, 15 car lengths over these three. Stokel's not too far back either, Craig. So while all these cars are dicing away, that's slowing them up. It's allowing Jim Richards to gallop off into the distance. Noski there, hounding. Let's take a closer look at that replay. Yeah, just trying to pick up what actually happened there. I think maybe Mark just lightly locked the rears of the car, felt the car starting to move and probably backed off and uh, got himself all out of shape. But um, yeah, Bradbury was forced then to go to the inside of the chicane as well. So, oh, oh now that's Tony Quinn in the and VIP pet food car and Greg Keane. So they've come together as well. Fortunately, they managed to keep it off the concrete walls. Oh, starting to hot up now. This is the battle for second, third and fourth. Oh, look at this. Contact there between the Ferrari and the Porsche. Noski very aggressively up alongside Bradbury. So he's getting a bit hot under the collar now. Noski, he wants to move up a position. Just trying to sneak down the inside there. There's the Lamborghini. And when you stand alongside this car, Craig, that Lamborghini is an enormous vehicle. It's so wide. And it's so low. I mean, yeah. uh, I mean, I'm even taller than the car, which is saying something, <laughs> but, uh, but it's a very, very low car, 5.7 litres V12, revs to about 6,600 RPM, develops about 500 horsepower, but it's quite a heavy car, in excess of 1,600 kilos, whereas the Porsche weighs in sort of at 1,300. Look at the amount of dirt and garbage that's getting blown around this track with this strong northerly breeze. I think it's actually freshened even more. You can see the flags flapping vigorously in the breeze here. It's blowing a lot of dirt packets and things around the place. A lot, of, a lot of the cart teams were complaining about that mark at the end of that practice session and it will be interesting as we come up to qualifying for the Honda Indy 300 right now. It's the Century Batteries Nations Cup cars and Noski getting anxious. He wants to get around Bradbury because Fitzy is starting to clear out. 
Yeah, good drive from Peter Bradbury. Very impressive performance, but it's really Germany now. First, second and third. Then the two Italian cars of the Ferrari and the Lamborghini. Well, lots more action to come your way. This is the Century Batteries race on the streets of the Gulf. We are back on the streets of Surface Paradise. GTP Nations Cup cars continue. The second of three races here this weekend. We're on lap five of eight. And Peter Bradbury under siege from the fabulous Lamborghini Diablo in the hands of Stokel. Stokel getting anxious. Let's take a closer look at a moment a couple of laps ago. This is Peter Fitzgerald diving down the inside of Peter Bradbury and Mark Noski sitting there just behind them in the Ferrari 360. So a nice move from uh, Fitzgerald to go through. Bradbury lost quite a bit of time. Noski closes up on him and this is the battle now for fourth and fifth between Bradbury and Paul Stokel in the Lamborghini. Just wondering if Bradbury is struggling in some way. He's fallen back from his third position which he started from. Made a great start moved up the order and have a look at this tremendous passing move from Mark Noski in the Prancing Horse Ferrari again on Peter Bradbury in the TNT Porsche looks to the inside oh what how close is that rubs the guard on the Noski way through the light touch but Noski goes through good stuff that was a really good move by Noski very tidy and he's just taken a new lap record as well he's dropped it again to 0.1 .01. So he's flying around here. So Jimmy Richards still the race leader. Peter Fitzgerald second. Mark Noski third. And again, a replay of an earlier touch between the two. He's not afraid to have a go, young Mark Noski, is he? No, he's a very aggressive driver. He does it well. Very focused on winning this year's championship, the Prancing Horse team, but uh, he's had a little bit of bad luck. Now closing on Peter Fitzgerald, so this is going to be quite interesting. 2.01. 01 was uh, Noski's time last time around, so he's four tenths of a second faster than Fitzgerald. They're being told that Fitzgerald, interestingly, uh, interestingly, is being shown the bad sportsmanship flag for Kurt oh. Lopping Craig. The battle for second place between Peter Fitzgerald and Mark Noski. So Fitz has got to watch it because the officials are watching him. Curb hopping, if you do it too much, can earn you a stop-go penalty. Three laps remaining for our race leader, Jim Richards. Look at the battle for third between Paul Stokel, Peter Bradbury, and he has got past. Christian Jones sitting there in sixth spot in the Warwick Fabrics Ferrari behind these two on the road. But this is going to be a very interesting fight for second outright. Fitzgerald in the VIP Pet Food, Falcon Tires, Porsche, Noski right behind him. Looks to the outside, Fitz has got to close though. He'll try and maintain as much speed through the corner as he can and get a fast exit. Stokel is carrying some incredible car speed at the moment. You saw just how much he managed to close up on Fitzgerald under brakes. Does it again now. See how much uh, stiffer the car is too in the suspension. You see the, the Porsche actually moves around over the bumps and handles it uh, perhaps a lot easier than the, the Ferrari, which is far more stiffly sprung. Is to throw the car offline a little bit. These two cars are close to the gap to our race leader, Jim Richards. It was out to over three and a half seconds. It's down to 2.3 now. So Peter Fitzgerald, two laps remaining. He hasn't got enough on his plate. He's trying to fight off Noski behind him. He's trying to catch Richards in front. And all the time he's got the officials watching for one more indiscretion in terms of jumping over the curve. So he's got a lot on his plate. Craig, the, uh, the prancing horse operation have undergone quite a big expansion in recent weeks. They're even looking for more personnel. Perhaps you can tell us a bit more about it. They've got something like five Ferraris in the stable now. We think they're actually breeding them. They've got five <laughs> Ferrari 360 challenges, of which there are only 150 built worldwide. So uh, Tony Rafter, Mark Coffey and all the crew there doing a tremendous job and have really taken GDP Nations Cup to a brand new level. Here Replay between Paul Stokel and Peter Bradbury as Stokel moves down the inside in this sensational black 666, the devil's number. Lamborghini Dave Lowe as he moves through. On the replay, keeping you right up with all the action. As it happens on the streets of Service Paradise, this battle continues. And how fascinating is this? A 3.6 litre classic flat six rear engine Porsche and the mid engine V8 Ferrari, about the same engine capacity, two entirely different configurations. And look how closely matched they are on the racetrack. And the Ferrari revs to about 8,500 RPM mark. The, the Porsche, Fitzy's Porsche revs to just over eight. Jimmy Richards, which has a different en engine management system. Oh, look at this. Right alongside, Noski's going to go side by side through World Commerces. I was going to say, that was a brave move. <laughs> <laughs> it cost him more time than gained him. But uh, the cars certainly rev a lot differently. Paul Stokel's Lamborghini, 6,600 RPM. The Dodge Viper, which is the fastest car on the track, uh, will do 249 k's down the main straight at 6,000 RPM. Whereas the Porsches are pulling just over 240. The Ferrari about 248 down the main straight. So that run out of the Worldcom S has cost him a lot of time. Had to play second fiddle through the Foster Chicane on the run down to Conrad Jupiter's turn. Here they come out of turn eight up toward FedEx. So 
Peter Fitzgerald got his mirrors full of that prancing horse Ferrari and Mark Noski's not going to give up one more lap to try and find a way around this GT3. Yeah, both of them had pulled another half second off Jimmy Richards too, but I don't think there's enough uh, laps in, uh, in the race for them to do anything about it. On the race score, shows you the positions on the track. 2.2 seconds for Cheryl behind Richard that time around. I'd imagine it'll close even more this time. Looks like Jim Richards has plenty in hand, just controlling the pace from the front. As they cross the start finish line once again. Interesting when you look at the stats, guys. Uh, Peter Fitzgerald, three-time Australian production car champion. 32 pole positions, 29 wins, and a 40% win ratio from pole, whereas Jimmy Richards has had 11 poles, 20 wins, and has a 66% win ratio from pole position. I'm surprised you can fit all those stats on your... On your uh... <laughs> Your, your piece of paper there because uh, the stats on Jimmy Richards are uh, seem to go forever don't they? They do, just an amazing driver in all sorts of uh, categories of cars. 1.5 seconds the gap now between our race leader and this battle for second place. Looks like Jim Richards has plenty in hand. Mark Noski tries a run on the outside, hard under brakes over the bumps at Queensland turn three. He's going to try again as he gets a sniff from the Porsche up to Telstra turn four. He's on the outside this time. We'll try the switch back. Get a faster run onto the Esplanade and try and get him as they come down toward Foster Chicane. Fantastic battle. Now this should uh, this should be where he does it actually, but Fitzgerald's moved to the inside. And gee, I tell you what, there's not a lot between the two in terms of power. The Porsche gets its power down. The Ferrari comes on a little later. This is where it starts to stretch its legs, but of course Fitzgerald's got the inside here. Someone's got to give, gotta give. Someone's got to give Noski. Forced to settle back in behind Fitzgerald. You can see Fitzy almost driving out the driver's side mirror. He spent the whole of that back section of the straight looking over at Noski just to see where he was. He's got to keep his cool here. He's got a much better run out of World Commerce's as they come down to the Foster chicane. If he can be close to Fitzgerald, he might have a go at him at Conrad Jupiter's turn. Did a beautiful job on Bradbury a few laps back. Can he do it again? Look at this. Gets a sniff of the inside. Fitzgerald <laughs> covers his territory. Side by side, under brakes into Conrad Jupiter's Noski. Badly positioned on the outside. There's nothing he can do there with Fitzgerald on the ideal racing line. Fitzgerald has prevented him from trying that switchback manoeuvre on two or three corners now, so he's well wise to what's going on. Uh, Noski <laughs> still having another look in the Ferrari. He is a wily old fox, isn't he, Fitzgerald? He's been around a long time. He knows every move in the book. Yeah, superb defensive driving from three-time Australian oh! <laughs> champion Peter Fitzgerald. As Noski shows a little bit of frustration there, and now Fitzy, of course, has got the clear run onto the straight. <laughs> well, two starts and two victories. Jimmy Richards will take out race two here on the Gold Coast. Second position, Peter Fitzgerald holds out the Ferrari 360. <laughs> Brian Gelding and all the boys, Jimmy Richards' team, pretty happy with that. And they were too. <laughs> Bradbury comes through in the TNT Porsche to take out fifth outright. Jimmy had a fairly lonely run out the front, but that battle for second was absolutely thrilling between the Ferrari and the Porsche, Peter Fitzgerald ultimately prevailing against his younger teammate, and he used a lot of experience there, didn't he? He just closed every option that Noski tried to dial up. There's been some behind-the-scenes changes with the OM's Porsche team as well, because young Martin Klein went overseas to work on the American Le Mans series. He was one of the, the chief engineers associated with this team, but they certainly haven't struggled in his absence, Craig, have they? Absolutely. This is one of the Sky Sands vibe. It looks like it's Rusty French in the massive V10 8-litre car. Well back in the field with his teammate uh, Darcy Russell. I guess a lot of people will be surprised when you look at that specification, Craig, of that Dodge car, 8 litre, yeah. almost 500 cubic inch V10 engine. Uh, the fact that it runs uh, pretty much a midfield runner all year. They actually uh, lend it to landscapers of a weekend to, uh, to go <laughs> stump pulling. It's got about 500 horsepower and as much torque. They're an amazing machine. They're incredible. When you talk to them at uh, places like Phillip Island, they just cruise around in third and fourth gear the entire time. An amazing piece of machinery, the Dodge. The sensational GTP Nations Cup cars.